Tonight, I'm being graced with the presence of three outstanding individuals who have had huge impact on women's basketball and athletics. Joe Russo, the new Fairfield High School girls basketball coach, two-time Newstime Coach of the Year, and class of 2014 Connecticut Women's Basketball Hall of Fame inductee. Jen Rosati, who led New Fairfield High School to consecutive state championships, was on the NCAA National Championship team as a UConn Husky, and was the 1995-1996 AP Player of the Year. And last but not least, Pat Miser, the athletic director at the University of Hartford and one of the only uh, female athletic directors at a Division I college, also a 2014 inductee into the Connecticut Women's Basketball Hall of Fame. First of all, I'd like to congratulate you all on receiving the awards and recognition you'll be receiving in just a few minutes, and thank you for taking the time to join us tonight. While we've got a few minutes here, I'd like to take the opportunity to ask you all a few questions about your respective careers. Joe, obviously you and Jen were fortunate enough to enjoy great success as a duo at the New Fairfield High School, winning the Class M State Championship in 1991 and 92. Now, while basketball is clearly a team sport, there's no doubt that Jennifer was a standout player. Joe, was there a certain moment or experience that you can remember when you realized how talented Jen was uh, at that point in her career? Yeah, it took about five minutes. <laughs> um, but there's a little story to this. Um, Jen was a New Fairfield resident up till fifth grade, Jen, correct me if I'm wrong, and yeah. your fa her father worked overseas. She came back to us as a 10th grader. So I really didn't know much about her, but the first time she stepped on the court, I said, oh, a new girl's coming, sophomore, maybe JV player. I see you go up and down. I said, oh, okay. Uh, but her talent, her skill set was there right from the get-go. Uh, what impressed me the most and what I knew right away, what kind of player she would be, is I have never saw a girl handle the ball with such quickness. Uh, we didn't have a kid like that at New Fairfield. And um, as all great players do, she was not only a, a great player, but she made everyone else around her uh, much better, and that was the key to our success, it really was. Because we had a, a pretty nice team there, and she was the final piece of that puzzle for us in the next couple of years. Great, thank you. Uh, Jen, you're currently the head basketball coach at the University of Hartford for the women's basketball program. In your years of being coached by Joe, was there ever a point when your own personal coaching career entered your mind, or did that goal kind of come into focus a little later in your career? Well, if you're asking me if Joe Russo inspired me to be a coach, <laughs> the answer is not so much. <laughs> but only because, to be honest with you, back in the early 90s, uh, coaching college basketball really wasn't um, a popular thing for, for young girls to be thinking about. There was no professional basketball at the time. Even, um, even earning a scholarship was a rare thing. So we've come a long way, and we're at a point now where every woman in college wants to be a coach when they graduate if they can't continue to play. So it wasn't honestly until Pat Miser called me back in 1999 where I ever even thought coaching could be something in my future. Um, I was a biology uh, major in college. I loved it in high school. I thought maybe I'd be a scientist and I wanted to play basketball as long as I could. Um, but once Pat got me on campus and <laughs> I started coaching, it, I was hooked. <laughs> okay. Uh, Pat, what qualities made you want Jen to coach the University of Hartford's women basketball program? Well, I would say the number one uh, quality was her competitiveness and her interest and will to lead. And that was something that I saw the very first time I saw her coach. Uh, and you saw that when you saw her play, her competitiveness, her leadership, her ability to get a group to do what she needed them to do. So I think those things were easy to spot and certainly early on in her coaching career. She, she was just a born natural coach. Beautiful, okay. Um, what are you the most proud of out of the things you two have accomplished over your years together? Well, I would say that I think that what we've done at the University of Hartford under Jen's leadership has, uh, we've raised, the, certainly raised the level of performance into the national scene. People don't understand how difficult that is to do, um, but it takes a lot of hard work, 
both on the floor and in and around campus. And I think that uh, being able to take a program from nowhere to somewhere, not just somewhere, but certainly one of the best mid-major programs in the entire country, that's, that's, that's a lot to be proud of. And it, it takes an awful lot of work over a long period of time. I've always said that to develop winning programs at the Division I level, it starts with hiring a great coach, and we did that at the University of Hartford. That certainly is something to be proud of. Um, now, I'd like to ask all three of you uh, the same question, and you can answer in any order that you'd like. Um, you've all been involved in women's basketball, and more generally in women's sports, for some extended periods of time. Joe, you've been coaching for over 30 years. Jen, you've been either playing or coaching for close to 30 years. And Pat, you've been involved in women's collegiate athletics in one capacity or another since the 1970s. During your years involved in women's athletics, whether it be at the high school or collegiate level, how have you seen women's, the women's basketball arena change? I think you should start, Pat. You were, you, you were there when <laughs> Title IX was, was uh, adopted, yeah. and you can probably speak yeah. to that the most. Actually, um, in, in preparing for my retirement, I went back and looked and realized that when I took over the program at Penn State, we had a nine-game schedule. And within two years, we were up to 26, 27, uh, games per season, which is the NCAA right now is limit is, is 27. So we were able to really move the program into uh, a much higher performance level. And I think that our women have responded. We still have a ways to go, but uh, little girls are playing the game with enthusiasm and energy and commitment. And so as a result, over my career, which is now about 46 years, the game is so much better. And I hear people say, uh, and I love it when I hear men say, you know, I'd really rather watch the women than the guys. Uh, it's a great team sport, and that's the way we play it. And uh, so it's, it's changed with, in so many ways. From a high school perspective, um I think more kids are exposed to it at an early age. Uh, there are more girls playing uh, outside of the regular season in AAU. I think, Jen, when you started, I think that was the start of AAU. Yeah. I remember she was on the national team. That was the only team. Now there's more teams for the kids to play. Uh, the skill level is better at the high school level because more kids are playing. In the past, when Jen played, you would have to worry about maybe one player on a team to prepare for. Now it's two or three or more. and I think the coaching on the high school level has improved a great deal. Uh, you have to do your homework, go scouting, and I think the coaches are better prepared. I'd agree. I think mm -hmm. Title IX <clears throat> provided the opportunity and us women took advantage of it, mm -hmm. um, whether it's youth sports, uh, more girls being involved in every sport, um, whether it's opportunities for women in coaching or officiating or administration. Um, I think we kind of exploded onto the scene in the 80s and 90s and we haven't looked back. Um, I agree that the talent level has gotten better. Um, there's more interest. Uh, you can see, you know, opportunities for women beyond college. It used to be barely opportunities beyond high school, and now you see mm -hmm. women playing professionally overseas in the United States. You see uh, women going on to, to college coaching and administration. So uh, it's, it's really, um, you know, exploded, I would say, in, in my lifetime, and I'm I, th I think I'm just happy that I was born at the right time <laughs> and I've had all, uh, all the opportunities that I've had. Okay. Now this next, this next question may engender a rather repetitive response, and if you think that that's the case, we can just move on. Okay. Um, but how have you seen women's athletics in general change? Well, clearly more opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, and um, that's, I also think that all the pieces that go along with a quality competitive experience, whether it's what they're wearing, how they prepare, um, how they train, do they strength train, um, do they work on quality nutrition, who's teaching them about the whole game has changed and we need that kind of thing. Uh, we have to be concerned about student athlete welfare and working with the whole student athlete is a piece of 
the improvement in the game. Learn it, women are learning how to train, how to take care of their bodies, and how to compete, and that includes the psychological part as well. Yeah, very well said. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so one final question, where do you think women's athletics needs to go from here? Uh, actually, uh, we've, we've done a lot of um, talking at the women's basketball college level uh, about how to increase exposure in the women's game that we've kind of hit a little bit of a plateau. Um, I think that we're challenged to figure out creative ways to market women's athletics to get the you know, moderate interest level in watching basketball or softball or volleyball games to be at a much higher level consistently around the country. I think women's coaches and players need to be more engaged in that process. Uh, and we need to continue to work hard to develop youth coaches um, and, and skill opportunities for younger players so that our product continues to increase um, and get better. You know, we want to grab the attention and say, hey, this is a great product to watch. So I, I think uh, the coaches, at least at the college level, are really committed to taking the next step forward and making sure at least women's basketball is something that's that's getting better and more exciting to watch and whether it's with rule changes or just bottom line fundamental skill development we're going to work really hard to to continue to increase exposure okay yeah i, I agree with jen on a lot of those points uh some of my kids uh, in the last few years i ask them as you watch uconn game yeah. or and they look at me like i have two heads and i think we have to get them more exposed and, and watching the the college and, and the professional leagues play. I would just add that along with all of those <clears throat> um, items that have been mentioned, a financial investment mm -hmm. um, that will assist in all of those elements that we need, uh, that, that's a key piece. And we've felt over the last 40 years the disparity in financial investment. And the federal government has made it clear that that needs to change. Um, so that's a piece of the future. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, the three of you, for your time. Uh, congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I appreciate you guys being here. Not a problem. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.